Oh, hello, fellow Rainmakers, and welcome to this session of the Rainmaker Briefing with me, Mark Stonham. And the topic uh, for now is um, three sources of new clients. So um, we all appreciate how important new clients are. Um, they help us to grow the business. They replace the clients who, for whatever reason, fade away. And if we don't get this right, we do run the risk of getting into a feast and famine approach to things. So my, my way of structuring the next sort of 10 minutes or so is to look at the rational side of things, then look at some emotional aspects to it, and then at the end to ask you a question. So this is really around encouraging you to take some action on this rather than just deal with this as a sort of a, a just a teaching session. So uh, bear that in mind. So on the... Um, on the rational side, uh, it, it's easy to feel a bit overwhelmed, I think, with the number of messages that come out about gaining new clients. And there's all the different techniques and training courses and this, that and the other that are being put, put through. A while ago, there were something like 50, 75, 100 different techniques of getting clients that were being put out there. And uh, yeah, which of those are right for your business, for your business model, for your need, for your time of development and so on. So I netted that down to three, uh, three ways to gain new clients. And um, the first one of those is to attract them to your business. So there's a number of techniques around that. Um, second is to invite them to take an interest in what you have to offer. The third one is to network, particularly for referrals. So add to that the fact that you're growing your existing clients, you're growing, attracting, inviting, and networking is what I refer to as gaining business, gaining clients. So growing your existing business, you're looking there to see how much you can get from uh, new extensions and, and growth in that direction. Uh, but probably also looking to see, are your clients able to provide a direct referral to somebody else on their network? So asking clients for an introduction or referral is a useful thing to keep on the tick over. And then looking at how much of your revenue is coming through from existing clients. Is it 90%? Is it 70%? Is it 50%? Um, and how much of your time is generating, is needed to, to generate that revenue? And therefore, what time do you have left available to do the other uh, activity for uh, finding new clients? So particularly there, think about, okay, time is limited, time is precious, money is, is, is precious and, and in terms of substituting money for time. So choosing one or two ways, particularly as a, as a solo partner or a small business, uh, senior professional moving into being a rainmaker is probably an optimum, particularly in a short time frame. So to deal with this as a project, as, a part, as opposed to an ongoing process that might be more applicable to a professional sales team where their job is sales all the time. Marketing professionals where their job is all the time to be marketing. So in terms of the uh, attract area, a number of ways that that can be done through the website and, and search engine optimization. Um, posting on LinkedIn is another potentially adverts I'd put under that sort of attract. So reaching out to people who you don't really know and inviting those to come through to the business to take an interest. The, the second, the I is to invite people and particularly I'd say this is possible online through search on LinkedIn particularly, uh, which is the, the modern equivalent of going through the yellow pages directory as it were and saying, well, okay, who are the businesses I'm trying to reach out to and phoning them around. In the professional uh, business to business area, LinkedIn is a, is a fantastically rich source of um, the ability to find the sort of people we're looking for. Um, and the third area is, is networking for referrals. So you maybe go to business groups, uh, lunches, breakfasts, and so on. Make sure you're in the right sort of room there and make sure that you also are able to educate that group about what is an ideal referral for you. And take the principle that you're trying to sell through the room, you're trying to educate people so that you leverage the people in the room to introduce you to people in their network, rather than selling to the room. So um, if you get an inquiry from somebody in the room because they match your ideal client, then that, I'd say that's a bonus rather than an objective. 
Um, and then out of that, uh, moving through to uh, putting a plan together. So I'll come back later on at the end of the session to ask you which of those to focus on. I do think there is a danger, particularly if we work on our own or as a small team or as a business leader, that we run, we, we, we're at the danger of, of, of two things. One of which is we do too many, or we have too many trivial tasks on our list. Um, so as well as the prospecting, we're also trying to move uh, inquiries through to a sale, doing a lot of follow-up and quoting and that sort of area. We're also doing the um, leadership of, of, of projects and uh, providing the specialist knowledge that we are domain experts in and so on. So there's a lot of things that we need to deal with. And unfortunately, lead generation, uh, new, new clients can be relegated to, um, to something for another time, pushed, uh, pushed to the right. Um, so I think there's an aspect there of, of thinking about what can we cope with, where should we focus our efforts, and particularly then looking at um, how can we break out of that feast and famine and use whatever the, the non-fee earning time that we've got, whether that be 10%, 30%, 50% of our time, how are we going to use that to generate uh, new clients in a, an effective, productive way, as opposed to a scattergun, random, um, wing and a prayer approach. So that's the sort of the, the, the rational side of things. And then I wanted to say, well, okay, what's, what's the emotional side that goes with this then? Because as you may have noticed uh, on some of the other videos I've recorded, what is the gap? What is the before and the after? So moving into the sort of sales management experience that I've had, or I've been, having been in sales, we've had the motivational Monday morning meetings, um, and I've run those as well, motivated groups and people, uh, teams and so on. So what is it about gaining new business that's actually going to inspire you? I want you not to just look, think about this as a logical, rational, I know I must do it, but to get you to a point where you really feel that you want to do it, it, it gets into your, your psyche. So around that, to what extent is growing your business a top priority for you? Not just in the nine to five, but in the 24-7. How passionate are you about your business and the growth of your business and your clients? So do you wake up at night thinking about how to grow your business? Do you mull things over? And my own preparation for, 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 for this call was that uh, I spent an hour in semi-slumber between about three and four o'clock uh, last night mulling through how to put this topic across in, in the best way. Um, and I think there's, if we, if we are sort of mulling our business over overnight, there's also the other side. Are we thinking positively about growth or are we thinking about the problems and issues? And if we're thinking problems and issues, there can be a real challenge, I think, in our, in our psyche around that. That if clients' issues are, and, and some of the internal aspects are, are, are seen as a problem, that may be the sort of the monkey on the shoulder that's nibbling away and saying, well, you've got all this to deal with and now you're also trying to think about growth? Are you silly or what? So somehow we need to silence the negative voice and have a way of dealing with that and encourage the positive voice. So, um, so thinking around that, how can we create an environment where we are thinking positively about growth? And part of that may well be that we find strategies to silence the, uh, the the nagging doubts internally and or if there are any come from external sources to, to marginalize those but also to build up our own resilience and our own uh, psyche for thinking about uh, growing our business and one approach to that may be also to to turn it around as i've talked previously about the the, the, the two sides of purpose one purpose is our own growing our business, increasing revenue, increasing profit, and so on. And the other is to convince ourselves that the, on, on the opposite side of the, of the jigsaw piece, what we have is valuable to other people. And the reason we're growing our business is so that we can serve and help more people. And if our raison d'etre, our motivation is to find a way of serving more people and helping them to achieve what they want to achieve, then we have uh, an alignment there. And I suggest that that would make 
the motivation to find new clients much stronger and find a way of, of, of overcoming those doubts that, uh, that may be nagging away. So around that, looking, looking for ways of uh, helping you through, I would encourage you not just to think of this as a, an academic exercise, yes, a very nice talk, but to think, okay, what am I gonna do in the next week to find new clients? Is that going to be in the area of attracting new clients by writing an article, by posting more on LinkedIn or something of that nature? Is it going to be to search for particular people on LinkedIn, do a, a search and identify maybe 25 or 30 people and send invitations to them through LinkedIn and see if they will respond to that invitation? Is it to network for referrals? And yes, one is, we can't go out to meetings these days. Zoom is a possibility. But I would also be more direct about that and say, who has provided referrals to us in the past maybe two or three years or so? Have we been back in touch with them? Thank them for providing previous referrals. Just give them an update, see how we can help them and, and nudge them to perhaps see if there's anybody else they could provide a referral to. So there's some specific hopefully very short-term quick return activities there which I'd invite you to choose one of those um, either to start posting more on LinkedIn and see who follows up you know who comments into that maybe directly invite some people to, to seed that uh, circulation in, run a search on LinkedIn and invite people as a result of that to connect with you and contact people who previously provided referrals so make a goal of that uh, keep it top of mind, put it on your notice board or whatever for, for the week so that you don't forget about it. And when, there, you, when you do have an opportunity, uh, down five minutes here and there, or more particularly, probably an hour or two to dedicate to it at some stage so that you are focused and, and get into the groove. So I hope that's been useful, encouraging, both an, a good explanation on the rational side, good motivational on the emotional side. And now I'd encourage you to go forth and uh, make some rain. So have a have a great day, have a great week, and uh, do let me know how you get on with your uh, with your lead generation and finding new clients. It's Mark Stollen, Rainmaker Briefings. Thank you for your time. <laughs>